In June this year of 2020, with the year of when everything hit the pan, a really hot pan that is, Green Stuff World sent me a little bottle with a prototype of something called liquid frost. I curiously and immediately tried to smear some out on a black empty base, then sort of hid it in a cupboard. Uh, my focus was more on getting my Age of Sigmar army together. Now, this stuff, frost in a bottle, is on the market. I want to clarify that Green Stuff World does not pay me for this. The liquid frost uh, is a whitish liquid that, when given some time, grows crystals. Like a crystal farm. At first, you get tiny crystals that remind of frost. Rim frost, we call it up here in the north. If more liquid is added to the rim frost, the crystals grow. Uh, repeating this process over and over will lead to really big crystals. This is all chemistry magic to me, but awfully fun. Not being very entertained by uh, simple reviews, I thought I would build a winter diorama. Using the liquid frost in context and sharing some terrain tips and tricks along the way. It's my second diorama, and I'd say it's my first proper one. It's the first one on a plinth, anyway. And the first one telling a story. I call it Another Bad Day at Work, and contains the loveliest old hammer dwarf, uh, now baptized uh, Bravle Dwarf, by one of my patrons on my uh, Discord channel. The diorama is based upon a piece of wood with some XPS foam glued on it. Using cork bark to build up hills and shoreline, in my mind I'm after a rugged, wind-battered shore. Uh, there's a hill in the background with a waterfall. On the cliffs stands a lone, brave dwarf warrior defending the realm from a monster that rises up through the icy waters below. I filled the gaps using uh, green stuff, and when running out of uh, green stuff, milliput. Stabbing the milliput with the toothbrush also rendered a nice coral-type texture. Using the Greek texture roller from Green Stuff World rolled out on Super Sculpty gave me a piece of dwarf road and some bits to spread on the sea floor. I then covered all empty surfaces with Soilworks Summer Ground Texture Paste, squeezing in rocks made from cork bark and other bits and pieces. When dry, I glued on uh, kitty litter, yeah, and sand, then baking powder and super glue, finishing off with crackle paint. Different textures are in my mind really important on terrain and dioramas, making them a lot more lifelike. I experimented with the liquid frost to see if I could grow coloured crystals and to see how it would react to different additives, trying ink, uh, pigments and dye. The ink actually worked alright, the dye failed and the Pigments gave interesting results. The pigment seemed to weigh down the crystals in varying degrees, but with a bit less pigment, the crystal kind of grew into a cool blob that looks quite disturbing. I also made sure to test that the frost crystals would not react weirdly with resin, UV resin to be precise, and no worries there. I decided to do some shards of ice, cutting pieces of clear plastic packaging, formerly surrounding some tufts, I believe, then painting on a generous layer of liquid frost, one with some blue ink in it and some without. The process had to be repeated twice to get a good frost, waiting probably an hour in between layers. While we're on that subject, the, the subject of time, building up the big crystals does take some time and is you know not done in a rush. These crystals need time to grow. All I'm wondering is, what do they eat? I mean, everyone needs to eat in order to grow. After Zenithal priming the build, I used a favorite technique using paints diluted half and half with water, sort of wet blending them together, giving the terrain some color but still retaining some of the depth from the Zenithal priming. After that, I dry brushed using white liquid pigment from Green Stuff World on a large makeup brush. This liquid pigment is absolutely wonderful for dry brushing, giving a smooth and detailed result. For the waterfall, I used the same type of packaging uh, plastic used for the ice shards, warming up with the flame to be able to shape it in a uh, flowing manner, bearing in mind not to burn myself uh, or the cat, then sculpting something resembling flowing water uh, using splash gel from, yeah, you guessed it, Green Stuff World, uh, on the back of the waterfall, the side that will be facing the rock. 
When dry, I glued it in place with a minuscule amount of UV resin. Regular superglue will cloud the plastic surface and uh, is a no-go. The monster my brave dwarf will uh, hopefully defeat is a bit I found among my childhood Warhammer bits. I have no idea what this is from. And if you know, please let me know in the comments because I'm just real curious. Anyway, it, it was too short to do the trick, um, so I sculpted a worm-like extremity using uh, Super Sculpty and uh, green stuff. Once in place, the monster worm part got smeared with a goo based on glow pigment and uh, master medium. This hopefully will make the ground whole and bottom part of the worm glow in the dark. And finally came the first layer of liquid frost. I needed to cover everything that soon was going to be covered by resin. Uh, in retrospect, a lot of the work I put into underwater textures was a bit of a waste of time as they kind of will get covered by ice in the end. Um, but this was going to be my first big resin pour, so I was nervous. I used hot glue to glue in place strips of packaging plastic, then sealing the inside edges anywhere the resin could leak out with UV resin. This could have been done with a Liquitex gel and probably the splash gel I used previously, but I was not prepared to wait for that to dry. Before we start pouring, I want to talk a little bit about the big crystals. I personally did not use any crystals in my build that grew this big, uh, going for a bit more realism. But they are cool and could be used for more than something ice related. But they are utterly fragile. I have been told that the crystals can react, uh, not in a good way, to varnish. Uh, the varnish sort of eats the crystals and that would be kind of limiting if one wants to use this effect for anything tabletop related. So I wanted to do a test with some different varnishes I have in my possession. In all cases the varnish sort of melted the crystals in varying degrees. Uh, Vallejo's regular acrylic matte varnish uh, really melted stuff. Whereas both the Vallejo polyurethane matte varnish and the matte varnish from Instar didn't actually reap too much havoc. And bearing in mind as well that I brushed these on heavily, using an airbrush would probably be more forgiving. If you really want to harden a crystal, you can use superglue. Cyanoacrylate. Preferably one that is not as thick as the one I used, uh, brushed on, and not with your favorite Kalinsky brush. Oh, and now you're wondering why one is blue. Well, these crystals are fine to paint with acrylic paints, especially after some hardening. You can also mix ink with some liquid frost, like I did previously on my ice shards, and then paint it on. It would color the crystals, but also grow a little, rendering quite a nice look. Now back to the resin. I'm using UV resin for this, uh, perhaps not the most practical for such a big pour, but casting resin is really difficult to find here and I was on a tightish uh, time schedule. I made one mistake with this pour. I wanted to add some ice shards into the water. By the way, I opted for the white ones, not the blue. This was going to be the ice that the monster had cracked through on its way up and they needed to be higher up, not resting on the seabed. So I added a bottom layer of resin that I hardened to glue the ice on. I didn't think I would get a visible line in the water, but I did. I should have solved the shards in another way and poured all the resin at the same time. Some cool stuff I did do though was to add some dye to the water, exaggerating the cold icy look and some of the glow pigment that sort of settled like dust around the monster, really making it look like it had just cracked through the seabed. By only flashing the UV torch briefly at some UV resin, only sort of half curing it, I could shape a disturbed water surface, also attaching more ice shards. But while doing this, I noticed some miscolored crystals. They looked burnt. I thought the UV curing process might have caused burning, but after really, really trying to fry crystals in different stages of development with my UV torch, I just couldn't get any burning results. I even tried to heat the crystals, knowing that curing resin gets pretty hot, but no luck there either. It turned out to be the cork bark. If it's the cork itself or an additive to the cork bark, I don't know. But crystals grown on my cork bark uh, grow out kind of yellow. 
sometimes even red and almost blackish. I actually like how it looks in another context, more sinister, minerally and underworldly than the white ones. Now I covered the rest of the sea and larger part of the build in liquid frost. While that dried, I added snow. I tested two different brands of artificial snow and the medium texture from soil works. The Vallejo snow did not allure me and I went for the other two. First a wetter, warmer layer of soil works, topping up with the citadel. I didn't want to cover the ground completely, more like a lot of snow had blown away from the harsh winds, leaving only snow in covered or sort of hollowed out places. The ice and the snow looked nice, but could be nicer, so I applied a second layer of frost and snow, then also adding some snow on top of the ice. And now the diorama was done. Building this diorama was awesome, and using liquid frost was also fun. It's not a super consistent beast. It's alive and grows differently depending on surface and amount. I especially like the thin layers. My build is pretty much covered with thin layers. It just gives a feel of ice and frost, subtly adding more and more where the spray from the water would freeze into ice crystals, mixed with a winter paint scheme and other snow effects. The end result is very wintry. This cold frost approach is the obvious use for this product, but I think it could be very handy for magical effects, underground crystals like in a cave, even bushes or fern on trees. It's not a product I will be using every day, but for a frosted or even cracked windshield or window, ghostly graveyard frost, it's delightful. I hope this mix of terrain building and uh, product test has been enjoyable to watch. If you do enjoy this, please consider supporting my work on this channel on my Patreon. I would also like to encourage you to test new things. Not necessarily this specific product, just testing something new. This was new for me, building a proper diorama. And if you haven't built a diorama, I can recommend that as well. There's something about creating a scene and a story, not just painting the one mini, but giving it a little bit of a world to live in. Oh, and it does glow in the dark.